people focus on the Garden of Eden story in the Bible as if it's a one-off. It's talking about the point when human genetics were interfered with and genetically manipulated. Welcome to my channel guys, may God bless every single one of you. So this is part 3 of the video that I've made about things that almost 98% of Christians ignore. In case you missed the video, I will put the link on the description down below. So today I will talk about what the science calls the missing link. In 1835, a famous biologist named Charles Darwin discovers that in the evolutionary line, the chain is not complete. There is something missing, a missing species between chimpanzee and human beings. And he believes that the missing species is an ancestor of human beings. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because the Bible says the same thing and almost 98% of Christians don't know nothing about it. Things that I'm about to show you right now in the Bible will blow your mind. It will make you wonder if we are using the same Bible. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before the Biblical, God created the world. He first created the heavens. And inside the heaven, He created the cherubs, the angels and the archangels. The archangels were essentially the highest rank of the angels and the chief messenger of God Himself. Among these archangels was a being known as Lucifer, the highest archangels of all. He was described as being the most beautiful creature that God ever created. But according to the Bible, the first time that the sin has been found was on Lucifer. He is the origin of all sins. The Bible says, from the day you were created, you were blameless in your ways until weakness was found in you. So what was the weakness found in Lucifer? The Bible says, he said, I will ascend above the top of the clouds and I will make myself the most high. See, Lucifer wanted to replace God, but in order for him to be the most high, he had to replace or dethrone the most high and that wasn't gonna happen and it created a big war in the heaven. Then God sent an archangel named Michael to fight against Lucifer and all the angels who sided with him. According to the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 to 8, the Bible says, Then a war broke out in the heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough, and no longer was any place found in the heaven for him and his angels. And the great dragon was hurled down, that whole serpent called the devil, and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was hurled to the earth, and his angel with him. Now I want you to keep in mind that this video is all about the origin of humankind. But the reason why I brought this story is because I want you to remember two things. The first one is that sin has been found for the first time in the heaven. The second one is to notice the presence of two forces, good and evil. Evil left the heaven and came down to the earth with great anger. So now you know that Satan or the devil is on the earth, right? And I'm gonna show you now his first interaction with humankind. But before I do so, I have to explain to you everything from the beginning, the creation. God created all things in the invisible world and visible world which means that everything that exists in the visible world, things that you can touch and see, existed first in the invisible world. I know you may be confused right now, but for example, when somebody is dead, the spirit leaves the body. You don't see it, but it's there. It's something that God created in the invisible world. The Bible says, For in him all things were created, things in the heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible. People who don't understand this think that there is a contradiction in the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2. Because in Genesis 1, the Bible says that God created a man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. 
But in Genesis 2, the Bible says that then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, not male and female, only a man. Is this a contradiction? Did God create a man twice? Or are we missing something here? Well, it's not a contradiction because in Genesis 1, the Bible says that God created a man in his own image. Now the question is, who is God? John 4, 24, God is spirit, and his worshiper must worship him in spirit and in truth. Adam was created in the image of God as a spirit, which is invisible, you can see it, in the invisible world. But in Genesis 2, the Bible says that God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and that was in the visible world. That's why in Hebrew 11 verse 3, the Bible says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed in God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Did you hear that? What is seen was not made out of what is visible. Which means that the visible Adam that God made from the dust of the ground in Genesis 2 was not made out of what is visible. He was first made in Genesis 1, in the invisible world. And after that, God created his physical and visible body with the dust of the ground, in the visible world. Now let's talk about the origin of human beings, in the Garden of Eden. But before I do so, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Please do it right now. Thank you so much. People focus on the Garden of Eden story in the Bible as if it's a one-off. It seems to be talking about when humans were created, Adam and Eve. I would strongly suggest from my research that actually it's not talking about that at all. It's talking about the point when human genetics were interfered with and genetically manipulated and so humans became at that point themselves a hybrid which had a great infusion I would suggest of what I would call archon genetics symbolically the serpent in the Garden of Eden so Mr. David Icke believes that the story of the Garden of Eden is talking about the point where human genetics has been interfered and manipulated by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And in the other hand we have the famous biologist Charles Darwin who believes in the same thing but in a different way. So Charles Darwin is not talking about the Garden of Eden or the Bible. But Charles Darwin believes that there is a missing link between humans and apes. He calls it man-ape or ape-man, a missing species between humans and apes. At the end of the day, Mr. David Icke and Charles Darwin are still humans and they can make mistakes. But let me show you what the Bible says about it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the Garden of Eden. And like I told you before, the devil was in the heaven. He was a good angel until sin was found in him. And from that moment, we saw the presence of two forces in the heaven, good and evil. And the Bible says that the devil was cursed out from the heaven. And I'm gonna show you in the Bible that the two forces, evil and good, was also represented in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis 2.9, the Bible says, Out of the ground the Lord gave growth to every tree that is pleasant to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden, were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I know for a fact that you just missed something here. Please pay attention. The Bible says, Out of the ground the Lord gave growth to every tree that is pleasing to the eye and good for food. It means that God gave growth to every tree that was pleasant to the eye and able to produce fruit or food. Now listen, the Bible says, And and is used to introduce an additional comment or interjection, which means that it's not the same thing, it's something added. It says, 
and in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all know that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was able to produce fruit. Now the question is, why God had to mention it separately from all the other trees that was also able to produce food? I know that you may think that the reason is because God didn't want them to eat that. But what about the tree of life? Because don't forget that there is two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, these trees are not normal trees or physical trees, that's why nobody ever found them. A tree is simply a source of life that will reproduce the same life over and over again. In the Garden of Eden, the tree of life was God. That's why Jesus calls himself in John 6.35 the bread of life, which means a source of life. And in John 6.54, Jesus said, Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. See, Jesus identified himself as the source of life, which is the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. In the other hand, we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God told Adam, the day you will eat from that tree, you will die. Which means that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the source of death. Just like I told you, the tree of life was the source of life, God. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the source of death, the devil. And the Bible says that the devil holds the power of death. Now the Bible confirms the presence of the devil in the Garden of Eden. Not the old serpent, but the devil himself. Now the question is, what is the difference between the two? The old serpent is an animal created by God and named by Adam. The Bible says that Adam named all the animals of the field and every bird of the hair. So who is the devil? The devil is a spirit represented in the Garden of Eden as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that spirit entered into the body of the old serpent who was an animal created by God. Now the question is, why did the devil only chose to use the body of the serpent and not other animals or human beings? The first reason is because humans have souls and animals don't. That's why the devil had to approach Eve by the outside and wasn't able to get inside of Eve. Do you remember the story when demons asked Jesus Christ to send them into pigs? Just to show you that demons or spirit are able to get inside of animals body and control them but not human beings. But after the scene, we can see that the devil was now able to get inside of human bodies because the Bible says that the devil entered into the body of Judas. Why? Keep watching, I'm gonna talk about it. Now the second and the main reason why the devil used the body of the serpent is because, first of all, don't forget that the devil was one of the smartest archangel of God. He knew the principle of life. And more than anything, he knew the law of reproduction. He knew that hybrid can be created or formed when two species that are closely related mate or have sex. That's why today we have a cross between zebra and donkey, they call it Zedonk. And the cross between zebra and horses, they call it Zors, and many others. So the devil didn't just randomly pick the serpent, it was a calculated move. He knew that the serpent was closely related to humans and that was his only way to infiltrate the human race. Now I'm gonna show you in the Bible that when the Bible is talking about eating the fruit in this particular contest, it's talking about having sex. Eve and the serpent had sex in the Garden of Eden. Let's open the Bible. Here is my opening. Matthew 15:11. A man is not the fire but what enter his mouth, but by what comes out of it. So are you trying to tell me that the sin that brought death to the whole humanity just happened because of what went inside of Eve's mouth? I don't think so because the Bible says, a man is not the fire but what enters his mouth. Now look at what happened. In Genesis 2.25 the Bible says, And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. But as soon as they ate the fruit, they realized that they was naked. See, everything is pointing at the sex. Here is another one in Genesis 3. After they ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God asked them a question. He said, what have you done? And Adam said, it's the woman that you gave me. 
And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. And if you look at the meaning of beguiled in Google, you will see that it means charming, attracting, seducing someone. First of all, why would the serpent try to seduce and attract someone just to make them eat a simple fruit? It doesn't make sense. In order for you to attract someone, you gotta be attractive. So forget about the serpent that you know today. There's a reason why the Bible calls him the old serpent, because he has nothing to do with the serpent that you know today, and nothing to do with the reptile that we have today, because he is the missing link that the science and Charles Darwin was looking for. So someone said, everything you said makes sense, but the only problem is, the Bible says that do not add or remove anything from the word of God. So if the Bible says that she ate, let's not call it having sex. So my question to you is, can you please tell me what is the real meaning of eating in these scriptures? I'm gonna put it there for you guys on the screen. Have no idea? Okay, let me give you another one. Proverbs 30 verse 20. This is the way of an adulteress. Stop right here. Who is an adulteress? A person who commits adultery. What is adultery? A voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not their spouse. Now listen. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and she whips her mouth and says, I have done nothing wrong. Now can you please tell me what is the meaning of eating here? It simply means having sexual intercourse. So in Genesis 3.16, when God was giving them punishment for what they did, God told the woman, I will sharply increase your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bring forth children. See, God didn't punish Eve's mouth for eating a simple fruit, but he increased the pain of her childbirth. And for those of you who knows, the pain of childbirth has nothing to do with the mouth and everything to do with sex. And in Genesis 3, 14 and 15, God told the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and every beast of the field. On your belly will you go, and thus you will eat all day of your life. So for those of you who think that the whole serpent was not an animal, but the devil, the Bible says, cursed are you above all livestock and every beast of the field, which means that he was one of them. But after the devil used his body, he became the incarnation of the devil. That's why there's places in the Bible where they call the devil the old serpent. Not only that, but his physical shape changed also. God cursed the serpent and said, in your belly you will go, which means that before he was walking. Now listen, in the verse 15 the Bible says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. So here, the Bible is talking about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. But we all know that the woman doesn't have seed or cement. Only man does. Jesus Christ was the seed of the woman, because for the first time in history, a woman named Mary was able to carry a seed or cement in her belly without the help of any man. Now the big question is, who is the seed of the serpent? The Bible says that Eve ate the fruit when she was with the serpent and then gave it to Adam after. Which means that she had sexual intercourse with the serpent first and then did the same thing with Adam. And because it happened in the close time frame, Eve was pregnant by two different fathers, the old serpent and Adam. And that's why Cain and Abel was twin brothers. And I can prove it with the Bible. But before I do so, I want to show you that it's possible for a woman to have twins from two different fathers. We are living in the world of information. Please guys, do some research and you will see that it's possible. Now let me show you that Cain and Abel was twin brothers. In Genesis 4, 1 and 2, the Bible says, Adam made love to his wife Eve and she became pregnant and she gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. In the verse 2, the Bible says, later she gave birth to Cain's brother, Abel. Now in the verse 25, the Bible says, Adam made love with his wife again, which means that when Adam and Eve made love for the first time, they had two kids. 
but I'm gonna show you that Cain was not from Adam. But let me finish the verse 25. Adam made love with his wife again, and she gave birth to another son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in the place of Abel, since Cain killed him. See, the first time they made love, they had two child, Cain and Abel. The Bible says that Cain came first and Abel came later. And the second time they made love, they had one child. His name was Seth. So here is a solid evidence that Cain was not a child of Adam. Eve was his mother, but Adam was not his biological father. In Genesis 5, the Bible mentioned the descendants of the bloodline or the family line of Adam. And Cain is not one of them. But why? Because he was not a biological son of Adam. But if you look at Genesis 4.17, you will see the family line of Cain. But he was not a biological child of Adam. And that's why in 1 John 3 verse 12, the Bible says, Do not be like Cain, who belongs to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did Cain slay him? Because his own deeds were evil, while those of his brother was righteous. See, Cain doesn't belong to Adam. He belongs to the evil one, the devil, the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And that's why in John 8 verse 44, Jesus was telling people, you belong to your father, the devil. Now listen, Eve was approached by the outside by the serpent and she ate the fruit. Adam was approached by the outside by Eve and he ate the fruit, which means having sex. But Cain was the first person in human history to have evil inside of him, not by the outside, but inside of him. But why? Because the Bible says that Cain was from the evil one. So here is my conclusion. In order for the devil to bring death in the world, he had to enter into the human flesh. And in order for God to give us back the eternal life that we lost, he had to enter into the human flesh too. And here is the difference between the two. The devil entered the human flesh by the way of sex, and Jesus Christ, to be called the perfect sacrifice, he avoided sexual intercourse. He came by the way of creation. He created a cement and put it inside of the belly of Mary. And that's why we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. May God bless every single one of you. I will put the link of this video on the description down below. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to tell me what you think about this video on the comment section down below. May God bless every single one of you. Bye.